Hey, what's going on, Rattlers? So I'm in a place right now that I have wanted to come for a long, long time. This is Envy Reptiles, and I have known Jason Nelson. It's really weird. I've known him for like over a decade, but today is the first day that I'm actually meeting him. And Jason and I, we have a passion about Pituophis. You guys know that. And Jason works primarily with a ton of really awesome Pituophis morphs, which are the bull snakes and the gopher snakes and the pine snakes. They're all in the genus Pituophis. And Jason works with some of the coolest Pituophis that you guys have ever seen. So I'm here with Brian Cusco. He's messing around with a black king snake there. And also with me today, you'll recognize Clint from Clint's Reptiles and his daughter, Penny Rose, who came to see all the really cool snakes. So I am really excited to get started and look through all of these racks of all of these amazing Pituophis that I have been, well, in envy of for a long, long time. So let's get started looking through these racks of these amazing Pituophis. I'm Dave Kaufman, and these are my reptile adventures. At Zilla, we are dedicated to the innovation of caging, lighting, and equipment solutions that provide proper husbandry for your pet's long and happy life. To see our entire catalog, visit ZillaRules.com. All right, so this is Jason Nelson and, you know, Pituophis, there's something that we share in common. We've talked for, I, we started long, talking long over a decade ago yeah. about Pituophis. This is actually the first time we're meeting face-to-face, -face, so, but I feel like I kind of know you, but, you know, in this scenario i want to see like go tub to tub but i know we don't have time for that so let's kind of start with uh something really cool uh and you were saying that in this rack this is a sonoran gopher snake rack i do have some applegate gophers on the bottom but most of it's sonorans um probably if you want to get right to the meat of it the probably my prettiest morph one of them yeah are these two there's only three or four of these in existence whoa these are meeker rusty sonorans. These and are just the amazing. total normal eyes, not albino. And what is the story behind this morph? The rusty gene was found outside of Tucson and it almost died off because nobody outcrossed it. It got too inbred. I don't even know what you want to call it. It could be a form of T positive. Is it recessive? It is recessive. And I just think Beautiful. it's I just think it's so cool because they got these normal looking eyes on these bright colors. Those are amazing. And so, how many people are actually working with this? Not very many. Uh, I, I think I've sold one or two of them. And this is a Christmas Mountain locality crossed with the Meeker. So now there's a lot of confusion with Christmas Mountain. A lot of people call them Christmas Mountain bull snakes, but it's out of the bull snake range where Christmas Mountain is in Texas. Yeah. So these are actually. The so, Sonoran Gophers. Yes, all that the Christmas Mountains are a Sonoran Gopher. Bird. Right, right. So they look and you know bulls and Sonorans. They're just so. I mean, unless you know where they came from and do or you know how to do scale counts, you're just gonna say they look so similar. Absolutely. Oh, now here we have the blizzard. Well, and this is not a typical blizzard per se, like most colubrids. This is just albino and exanthic, but a blizzard technically would have hypo right. included. Right. So now with the blizzard, I also know that it's albino, azanthic, and patternless, some people are calling blizzards. There's many ways to get to that. Exactly. Blizzard. It's, it's just beautiful. Yeah. I love and I want to see these baby blue ones, the yeah, xanthic. Unfortunately, I don't have them to get hashed out, but. That's incredible. They're coming close. This is just an albino meter, but. Uh, I love your hide box designs. I mean, yeah, they're so functional you know, well, and cheap. <laughs> not cheap, cheap and not they're, cheap. They're not. Just you know, I know what you're saying, yeah. but you know, they soil in it and you just right. throw it out. Right, exactly. You know, Swap them in that way. That's right. My whole <laughs> my whole house is cheap, not inexpensive. Some of these guys, <laughs> whenever it gets soiled, he just throws it out. That's right. That's right. <laughs> that couch. Yep. Just put a free sign on it. Stick it on the curb. Off we go. <laughs> she just now buying those Yeah, it's just a. I'm gonna have to get a bull snake from you soon, I think. Yeah. I've, been, I've been looking at all the bulls oh, over here. <laughs> I've got some gophers, but they just don't get this, in, just the girth of the... Like well, that's one of the reasons that I only enough. work with bull snakes and not gophers. I love them all. Absolutely. And I grew up with bull snakes, and you know, and I got here and I'm like, well, the gophers, well they're you like nice too. bull snakes. Yeah, so, right. Mm, there's something special about bulls. That's the I agree. That's the super forks. So this is, okay, so this is the super forks that we've all heard about. From Marathon, Texas. And that was considered a bull snake at one point. Right. Yep. 
That's yeah, for Brian. Go. That's there for Brian. Go. Well, I really want to, there's one that's making a lot of noise down here that I'd really love to just open up. <laughs> and if I get Jason's permission, I'll like open this yeah. cup down yeah, here. Yeah, Let's yeah, do yeah. it. Let's do All it. All right, so we'll put this one away. Brian is going to, uh, who's down there? Hissy Pissy. Oh, there, oh, you, oh, go. there you go. Deep in shed, and too. And in shed, but that thing is phenomenal. It's a silver. Oh, just come on, Brian. Show a little backbone. Oh, I'm good. I'm good. So this is an axanthic patternless with that yellow bull snake jean. Man, that is, is she is she usually is this really this hissy or is it just because he, she's a little stop. firecracker? You get you? No. Oh, okay. Next time. That's that's the thing with bull snakes is they're all kind of bluff. Yep. See this one, this guy with for whatever reason doesn't get as much tipping as this other line of axanthic patternless. So this and, are they allelic? The two lines. Um, they're the same. It's the same okay. bloodline. That's just got a yellow gene in it. That which takes, gets rid of the tipping. I apparently done something, yeah. and it was an accident. Yeah, yeah. Well, so Good accident. Happy accident to the best. Clint, like are, are what you best. are you asking if the bal the two basic lines of axanthic found in bull snakes are the balam line and the Miami? Miami. Are they compatible? Yeah. So they I are not. Okay. So they yeah they are not compatible. That's the question that we just answered by asking it. I just think this thing's colors oh, are wrong. Look at that. This is a yellow snow, isn't it? Yeah. It's a snow. Yeah, right. <laughs> it's a snow plus. So plus what? It's got hypo in it. That thing was pink. Patternless pink when I had it. Really? Patternless so, also. It does, it's not a patternless, but, but it, it was. was. When, yeah, when it hashed, it That's was pink awesome. and patternless. So this is Trump Power uh, Hypo, obviously. Yes, yep. And now, I just recently made a video about my bull snakes where I talked about the difference between the Trump Power Hypo and the Stillwater Hypo, and that the Stillwater is not Hypo. It's not a form of Hypo. What are your thoughts on that? I, you know, I and I don't work with a ton of Stillwater stuff, um, but... I, I think it acts like a form, you know, you know, there's morphs that act similar, yeah. I, in my opinion. Um, I have some weird anery stuff that hatches out silver when they turn brown. Right, so do I, yep. Weird stuff, but and gopher snakes, but right. ne See, and everything's not textbook, obviously. So, I mean, like this uh, Stillwater Hypo, um, I don't know, this is a Stillwater Hypo gene right here, so... You might want to tell me what you thought. I think if that's a the still waters are all. I mean, the still water gene and combos of it are all I really work with. Yeah, it looks a little still watery, but you know. But uh, obviously, it's outcrossed. And it's, yeah, right, right. Yeah, that's a good looking snake. But this one's pretty, <laughs> and this is what you're talking about. I right. guarantee. I Does think... it look like a hypo? Because right. it's got black on it. That's exactly what I'm saying. That is a perfect example of a still water. And that doesn't look hypo. No. It's a so glorious cool. snake, though. Yeah. She's pretty. I'm not sure I've ever seen any Petulophus snake that I, I didn't think was beautiful, though. I'm well, isn't think. that the truth? Like, I don't... I've seen plenty of ugly ball pythons. I'm kind of bummed that... Well, I don't know, I don't know if I agree with you there. <laughs> there are some genes you start throwing together and you just kind of get a brown mess. I'm kind of and, bummed. Uh, granted. I'm kind yes. of bummed because they're in the blue, but both, yeah. of, both of my ghosts. So these are Miami County Azanthic and Stillwater. Yeah. And of course they're in shed because I'm here, you know, because yeah. we're here filming. And there's two of them and they're both in shed. <laughs> oh, <laughs> they're both in shed. <laughs> and this one's actually prettier, but... See, that is an I don't know what they look like normally because I'm Come already here, in heart. Let's take a look at you. See why I like bull snakes? I mean, well, I've I... never had any question. They've been... Yeah. I, you know, boas and pythons have grown on me in the last five or six years, but I've always loved bulls because I grew up with them, and they, you know, like, they were the coolest snakes around. Absolutely. They're, they're bluffing. They're, that rattlesnake Absolutely. bluffing just makes it so fun yeah. to play with. Oh, yeah, and even, even when you raise them up from babies, a lot of them will do that always, but they never bite. They're just delightful. Yeah. Though, I mean, Love them. not that you can't get yourself bitten. Yeah. But. So this is a uh, lavender snow, and uh, that's a good-looking snake there. This has got the Miami County and the just out A now. But look at the eyes. And that is the classic bull snake threat. But look at this. There's nothing. There's nothing behind that threat. All show. All show. Put your head in your mouth. Except for my mic. <laughs> All right. So there's. We just talked a little bit about that there's two lines of azanthic within bull snakes. 
And so the lavender snow is made with what line of Azanthic? Um, this one I call, this one's Miami County Exanthic in this one. And I, I still call the other ones Lavender Snows too, but there's two. There's two, right. right. And they're two very different. You're going to see a big difference between the Ballum Exanthic and the Miami County. And this, I've only produced a couple of these. And there it is. Oh, so much more yellow. Much more yellow in that snow. So depending on what line of azanthic you use, you're going to get different looking snows out of, you know, that pairing. Um, All right, so let's move on to this rack, and this is where you said that you have some really, some like, cream. eye poppers in here. I'm going to get this one real quick because okay. this is one of my favorites, and she's a, she's a sweetheart. Oh, look at that. Yeah. This is a red hypo right. from a Trumbauer line. Trumbauer hypo. But it's from my albino red line. My male originally carried this gene. I never produced one of these yet, but people produced them out of my stock. <laughs> I had to buy back my own stock. Well, I've, I've had to do that, actually. Yeah. yeah. She's a sweetheart. Wow. She's, and she's she hasn't bred yet. She's maybe next year. Look at the purple on it. The it's almost like or the... digital or something. Yeah. Man, that is a color that I am not used to seeing on bull snakes. That is amazing. And is that? Yeah, she's... Uh, hopefully the brightness of that color comes through in the contrast. That's incredible. Yeah. Unfortunately, that white. head. I love that head because it's just a little more orange than the rest. Look at that! Wow, that is a really it's good like Brian, look at this little guy. Yeah. What do you think of that one? I like that. <laughs> That's awesome. For this is Clint's daughter. This is Penny Rose. Penny Rose. What's your favorite animal? Snake. Nice. <laughs> so where do we take you? What are we looking at? <laughs> it's a good day. What's your favorite snake, though? Sunny. And what kind of snake is Sunny? Python. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> now, now that you've seen these bull snakes, do you think bull snake might be your favorite snake? <laughs> okay, fair enough. But in well, this rack, no, you said no. everything is like gonna jump out because it's feeding day. So let's have Brian um, <laughs> handle all these. Yeah, grab them with your face. Which one? Any of <laughs> This is gonna be classic. Most of them are good. Anticlimactic. Uh -huh. So this is a yellow white sided bowl. So this is what happens when you add that yellow gene to white. Look at all that cream and yellows in there. That is pretty spectacular. This is a red albino. Not my typical red albino. I kept this one because it was an oddball. So my first snake that I ever had when I was, not very, not my very first snake, but the longest snake I had from the age of seven until I was like in my mid-twenties was a uh, rosy rat snake. It looked very much like this snake right here, yeah. color-wise. Wow, this is a, this is... Probably didn't have this much girth to it. Uh, not quite this I much girth, no. This is a high bino white-sided. Wow. So this is albino, hypo, and white-sided in one snake. And the thing is with hypo and albino, you can't tell a high bino from an albino. I can't, personally. I don't think anybody can. The reason I know is because I know what I bred these snakes to. Right. The guessing game, you can't just guess a high bino. Okay, this is a ghost. This is the Ballum line ghost. Look at that. Really subtle colors on that one. It's more chocolatey than the blacks that they'll get from the Miami County. But look at that head, that like clear patterned head. And I've only hatched like three or four of these. I just don't, I don't know why. I just haven't. Right? I just, right. Sometimes that's how it works. You know, Brian has been awfully quiet while we're filming. What, what are you doing? I'm just getting a little hug. You know, all your pituofes, they do all this false bluff striking. It was starting to get my hopes up that I was actually going to get bit. So I went in for the Mexican Black King Snake and got my wish. And it surprisingly, it feels really good, actually. And he said that I could go into the Mexican Black Kings, I'd get bit. This is actually like the seventh one that I put my hand into trying to get bit. And a little feed and response, obviously, because... The thing is, I'm not dying anytime soon, so I don't know when this snake's actually going to let go. But it literally, it feels good. It doesn't hurt. Feel, it, feel, yeah. it actually feels good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, back to the pitch office. Dun, 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 dun. Okay, this is a red... Oh. This guy is a firecracker. 
Yeah, and, and you just cleaned that five yes. minutes ago. I, yeah, absolutely. I did come here this morning. <laughs> absolutely, yeah. That is the joy of but full this, snakes. this is a red still water. That is the red still water. So that pattern, is it in shed? No, that's just how we turn it. Faded out. Look at that. I've never seen one faded out like this before. I only have two examples. So. I mean, there we go. There's a bite. There's that yeah. was the bite. It's, it's the microphone. It's always this the microphone. Is, he is, he's he's man, this guy's fat. He's, he's full of piss and vinegar. I actually got to pick him up before he got too pissed. This is a spam. But yeah, I mean, if you would stop biting my microphone so you all can hear me. But as soon as I saw this, I was like, that snake's in shed. But look at how, look at that pattern. Nice to meet you. Good to meet you. This is the big girl I was telling oh, about. Look at the size of this girl. Wow. And she's not, she hasn't got her weight back. I got a bit, another girl that's got her way back in look at that day. head look that's at like that. i said that's about double the size of the head is that red yeah. look at that she look, she's a sweetheart yeah wow what do what do we think like uh you know, six feet yeah let's I take her out and show her some scale here i think she's about i'm about six so, so yeah you're you're ten and a half feet tall so look at that <laughs> that gives you some scale as to how amazingly huge that snake is <laughs> Wow. But Matt, when this thing is loaded with eggs, it's like oh yeah, baseball. Almost. You know? uh, what she she's got to lay over 20 a year, doesn't she? I had one like 27. 27. Oh. I, uh, wow. I can't remember what snake that was. I don't remember what she laid. She upper teens. Upper teens, right? Right. Yeah. The snake that size. This snake is what you probably called me about or messaged me last year about leucistic. Ah. He's in shed. So I produced this. Um, he's got exanthic, hypo, patternless, and white side. And he's head for a male. And he's head for a male, of course. This is a powerhouse of a snake. Come here, sweetheart. This snake is about as close as you can get to a leucistic bull snake. Dark eyes, white body. Yeah, this is about as close as you can get to a leucistic without, of course, it actually being leucistic. And, well, I called it loose. Uh, I kind of call it a leucistic, but I call it Luke. Just Luke. For, <laughs> it's Luke. I don't name my snakes, but it's Luke. Luke. Well, Luke, yes. Lukistic is the uh, historically proper pronunciation. Lukistic, right? Because okay. yeah, you the hard C. But all right. So this is an amazing bull snake. That looks like a white-sided, azanthic patternless to me. And this guy Woo. has really nice white sides. His offspring will carry over that gene. Wow. His, his white-sided babies are awesome. Now that is a good looking bull snake. All right, so Clint has a uh, request and that's to see some black pines. Black pines, I love them. I'm gonna show you, um, this is a sub -adult. And this is probably the best looking one. Oh my gracious. Look at that. Jet black. It almost looks like an indigo with smaller scales. Absolutely. And, and it sprays less poop. <laughs> right. This is the indigo pine snake. I am so I'm so in love with this snake. Like, pits, How can you not be? Pits have most of my life been probably my, my favorite non-vipers. And... <laughs> and that snake's going to get bigger. That and, snake can get oh, a yeah. couple feet bigger. <laughs> That is an extremely dark black pine. Oh my god. Sometimes they'll have a little pattern on their chin, but this one is just all black. And you can tell there's a little iridescence going on even under these fluorescent right. lights. Right. Man, these are gorgeous. All right, outside we go. All right, uh, so <laughs> can we expect a black pine snake uh, video from you? I think up? that's a tremendous idea. Uh -huh. We'll have to talk to Jason to make sure that he's on board. There you go. Oh. There you go. You glorious creature, you. Fantastic. All right, so moving south of the border, these are Mexican pine snakes. Sometimes they're called Mexican bull snakes. That's the Depi Depi. And then there's also the Depi Jani. Yeah, I have another bloodline that's different. Brian, you want to buy some Johnny Depi Depi? I mean, with a name like that, Ooh. who wouldn't? That's true. There you go. Oh, now look at that one. That one's really high yellow. And one of the characteristics of this snake is that kind of solid background with these just kind of uniform blocky saddles all the way down. That is a good looking Depi. So uh, Brian, you feel like you kind of want to get into Pituophis now because they're so awesome? Well, I mean, yeah. I do think they're awesome. Yeah. However, is, I, this it's way different, king snake right? is really starting to grow on me. 
he's still attached to you. That's the same, same. We've been over here oh, now boy. for about three hours. <laughs> And he I is line, still. I blind bred him to get this darkness. Oh boy! I, you know, and honestly, him the, the that's kind of metal. It feels you great. Know, I'm not lying about yeah. that. I, I, I'm not one, just making stuff up. It actually feels stuff. good. That is like natural acupuncture. That's what I'm thinking. I think that's, it hit the natural pressure point. I had this little headache before, and it's it's gone. It's gone. Wow, you are onto something. Wall Rattlers, Clint and Brian and Jason are still looking through tubs. We have literally been over here for almost four hours now just looking through all these amazing tubs, but it would be a crime against nature for, first of all, that king snake to let go of Brian, but it would really be a crime for me to come over here and leave empty-handed. So I am getting these two really cool-looking San Diego gopher snakes. This one is a snow, and this is an albino het snow. So because I flew down here, Jason's gonna ship these guys home to me, and I really can't wait to get these guys set up in my family. So anyway, guys, uh, as always, hit that subscribe button when you do hit that bell so you never miss an upload. And thanks for watching, and until next time, Love the planet and rattle on.